today. I have a former Nazi soldier, a former member of Hitler Youth, who is going to tell us how Germany slipped out of having religious freedom and how that can happen to us today. He has written a new book called How It Was Possible. Now, we're not here to scare you, but truth will set you free. Welcome to our show. Thank you. I am so glad that you are here. You have so much to share with us. Now, you were telling me that you grew up in the church. That is correct. <clears throat> and that in your church, you never really understood about personal sin and that you needed to, to give that to the Lord and you needed to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Do you think that that was kind of a widespread attitude in the church in that time in 1930? Yes. I was, when Hitler came into power, I was seven years old. When I was 10 years, I had to go into the Hitler Youth. That was by, by law, and there was no other, Hitler, no other youth organization. And, but everybody know, and including myself as a child, I realized that the Jews, there was something very wrong, and they were constantly attacked. And in, in the church uh, I went to, I never had heard anything about it. There was no outcry from the organized churches. There were... Quite a number of people stood up, but from the institutions there was as nothing. So we were blind. I was blind. I, I really, you have to imagine that that uh, all the news you get all come from the Nazis. As whether, for instance, CBS or NBC would own all communication and would give you only you would only get their angle. We only got the Nazi angle in the in in the news in the newspapers, in school, in the Hitler Youth, and we took it, I took it as normal. Right, and so y your culture, your youth culture was taught to hate the Jewish people at that time. In fact, the whole society in Germany began to, to uh, be prejudiced in their dealings and their relationships. Jews had to wear a yellow star to identify themselves. They became laughed at. And it was, and the church didn't take a stand against it because some of that hate was actually coming from the church. And therefore we had, you, you had uh, whole groups of the youth. In fact, we're going to look at a picture of the Hitler youth. I mean, there were probably millions of young people involved. This was a society coming out of World War I. Many of these children did not have a father figure, and Hitler became the only father figure for them. So we can see how that, that mindset happened. But, but you were telling me that even the church, the hatred, came out of the church. How can we put a stop to that today? I don't think uh, it, it, it was, uh, I had never hated the Jews. I think something much worse is indifference. I was indifferent. It didn't occur to me uh, uh, that they could be wrong and your parents couldn't really talk with you because uh, Nazis always try to get the children to report on their, on, on their parents. I want to say, answering your question, I think people have to change. They have to change their lives. Everybody has. In my view, the line for America and for humanity, what I learned through the Nazis is that there is a fine line between lie and truth. And every person has to make a decision whether to be on the side of the lie or whether to be on the side of truth. When I came to the point where I had to make a decision on that, and I looked at my life with the eyes of God, which means with the eyes of absolute moral standards, I realized that I was a Christian hypocrite. I called myself a Christian, but I wasn't a Christian. So, and I think the indifference of, of the Christians in Germany not to stand up and fight the Nazis, that was the main reason why it could happen. Right. I mean, if we look at the number one thing Jesus said to us in his earthly ministry again and again, it was to love your neighbor as yourself and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart. And I think at we as Christians, if we can just keep that one teaching in front of us, we will not fall into that pattern of hatred. And I don't mean to say that we should um, say, well, then we can tolerate evil. What do you have to say about tolerating evil in our society today? 
Well, that is only a result of tolerated evil in millions of people. Here we have lots of things in our structure of society which are wrong. For instance, abortion. For instance, that there is in the schools and in the public, public uh, buildings, they take God out. We, they told us, the Nazis told us in school and in the Hitler Youth and in the, in the media, that he said, you Christians, you can sing hymns and pray as much as you like uh, in your homes and in your churches, but in society, we, the Nazis, the National Socialists, are the ones who determine the rules. And so they, were, they realized that if people believe in God and obey his commandments, they are an obstacle to the, their hateful ideology. But they didn't say so. Now here in America, I was really surprised to see that the ACLU has exactly the same philosophy. They try to take God out of society, out of the schools, and instead we have a vacuum, and that is what we see in the society to now. So I say the moral basis of Nazi Germany and part of the no moral basis of America are exactly the same, and America is going downhill. Can we stop it? We can stop it. How? Well, it begins with every last person. It is the truth which has to come out. We are living in a society which is covered with, a, with, 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 with lies. So, but how do you start to, to, to change the lie which determines life in a society? Very simple. Everybody has to begin with himself. That's right. I had to face with my, myself. I had to start with myself. And I went around to the, our neighbors after the war once I realized that my, my immorality was part of making it possible for the Nazis to commit their crimes. That's right. We have to take a stand. And you were telling me that in 1936, when the Hitler be, uh, began to euthanize the disabled, that some people stood up and that made a difference. Tell me about that. Well, we lived about very close to an institution which looked after those people. Mm -hmm. And the Nazis came and wanted to take them out and kill them. And the head of this institution, a pastor von Bodelschwing, uh, he made such a, 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 he fought like hell. <laughs> and I couldn't find the right words right now. He fought like hell. We understand what you mean. <laughs> and they were not able to do that, so they, they left. Right. So it made a difference, even in Nazi Germany, when a pastor stood up for disabled people who were going to be euthanized simply for being disabled. And, you know, here in Colorado today, we euthanize people. I don't know if, you, if you're aware of that, but in our hospitals, if uh, a person has a stroke, you may be approached by the doctor, and the doctor may say, you know, it's going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars to try to rehabilitate this person. Why not take uh, your inheritance now? Why not um, just let them go now? We can easily dehydrate them. We have been sold a bill of goods. We are killing our loved ones for the sake of convenience and inheritance. And that is not honoring our mother and father. It starts at home. We can make a difference in what we say when we're approached with those kinds of decisions. We can make a difference when we stand up for people like Terry Schiavo, who was murdered because she was disabled. And we can make a difference. People will hear us if we stand up. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Because those things are all related. Now, when, we, when the war was over and I came home, I think there was still an America, and it was a moral America, and we got a new start. I think when I, I became an honorary member of the uh, American Retired Officers Association, when I told, I thanked them for uh, giving their battle, gave me f uh, freedom. But still, we are going downhill, and if America goes under, there is nobody, there is no America. What was America for us at that time? There is nobody for America uh, today. So, and America is the only nation, in my view, which can bring a change, a moral change, to the rest of the world. How was it possible in Nazi Germany find?